Okay, these are larger than what I had planned on, but I think <laughs> it might do. Big step up from a 10 gallon pot. These are 30, no, 45 gallon, I think. Taylor Junipers, it'll say on here. Upright 45 gallon, yeah, there's the, don't worry about, don't worry about that part. Just <laughs> marvel at the glory of the size. I shouldn't do it. Partially, because that's not going to fit in the car. <laughs> like, not even close to fitting in the car. How much is the next size down? Oh, these are also 660, and they're nowhere near as big as those are. That makes those even seem like more of a bargain, doesn't it? Oh, these are nice, too. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. Emma, and, well, if you couldn't tell, at a tree nursery. Stopped in here at Chesterfield Valley Nursery in St. Louis, looking for some smaller Taylor junipers, probably not the ones back there that are about 15 feet tall, and some Prague Viburnums. Don't know if they have them, but I know some other nurseries that do. I was near this one. I thought I'd just come in and see if the one close to home has them and give everybody a little show, because this place is spectacular. I, there's no way I could show everything. Not even close. This place goes on and on and on. If you need any boxwoods, good place to come. Trees in general, lots and lots and lots of them. Like, look at, there's just fields and fields of trees back there. A lot of evergreens shipped up, or not up, but over from Oregon. And I'm feeling like I'm getting warmed where there might be some Taylor, it looks like through here. Maybe there's some Taylor junipers over here. Let's have a look. Though it would be, this is cool. What is this? Is it just some kind of pear? Prunus, Portuguese, or, oh, Portuguese, or, all right, okay. Don't know, you want a better look? There it is. I don't really know why I thought it was so neat. It's not that cool. I should not be wearing sandals. This was this was a bad choice. Okay, well there's one. Possibly. I don't know if it's a tailor or not. It is a tailor. I like the size. Uh, I would need two. I actually think I might be able to get bigger from another nursery for just a little bit more money. This has some dead in it and I need more than one. I think there's more over here though. Have a look at those. Get in closer. Are you? No, those are the arrows. I don't like the arrows. Not as full, not as hardy. They get like a weird shape to them. I prefer the tailors. They are more full on the inside. This looks like a tailor. Those are something else over there. Digging these too. Those are fun. There's some more narrow junipers over there. I'm really, I'm pretty dead set on the tailors. The tailors are a nice substitute for the Italian cypress, which don't really grow here. If we have a bad winter, they die back. And they don't like the up and down weather that we have here in St. Louis so much. There can be zero degrees Fahrenheit in the winter and then 105 during the summer, heat and humidity bouncing all over the place. Jeez, these laurels are gigantic. That's a great price for a cherry laurel this size. I don't know what I'd do with it, but just because of the size alone, I feel like I need all of them. But I don't, they weren't looking the best, but that's okay. They're fairly sturdy plants. Love these boxwoods too. Look at the shape on these. Great, big, huge, established green mountains. Yeah. Green mountains with the price cut off. That's suspicious. Why is the price cut off? I need to know how much you are. Okay. The price is cut off on both of these. Maybe all of them. Maybe somebody already has them, or they need new tags. That would be my guess. They probably just need new tags. Look at that. These things are huge. I like those hollies, too. I don't think I have a spot for those. I could find a spot. But is that what I'm here for? No. Oh, what am I talking about? <laughs> Making room for plants. That's always what I'm here for. Almost, almost just fell. Almost just went way down. Do these have a name? They look like Nellie. R. Stevens, that's whoever bought them. Do any of you guys have a label just so I can say that I like this one? Is it a Nelly? Yeah, Nelly Stevens Holly. Huge. That price isn't that bad considering these are gigantic established plants. I'm going to remember that for sure. I gotta come back for some of those. No, I don't know where they'd be going, but it's good to know they have them. That's something I'd like to make a spot for. Nice looking birches. The trees here are just massive, which is, again, not why I came here. I didn't come here for gigantic trees. I came here for little things that will fit in the back of my car, 
and some viburnums that'll make my skin nice and burning and itchy. Nice and burning and itchy, you know what I mean. The burning and the itch. Hopefully this narration isn't too annoying, just trying to keep it moving. I think I see some small tailors towards the front here. Let's see how much those are. No, okay, all right, that's about the same price as everywhere else. So the question is, do I just go ahead and get them here? I can't remember, it's like a 20 minute drive. Do I wanna do a 20 minute drive just to save like $5 or maybe spend $5 more? I can't remember. Hmm. I don't know, I'm gonna check out the viburnum situation now. Ooh, the fringe trees. I love the foliage on those, I love a fringe tree. I've been walking around here for a while and I haven't seen any viburnums, but I would be shocked if they don't have them because, you know, this place is, it's just a monstrosity. They have everything here. I probably just walked right past them, didn't even see them. Hmm. Literally walked right past a whole bunch of them. I'm pretty sure these are sold though. They have the blue, yeah, and red tags on them. But that means they have them here somewhere. Did I even look at the price? That was the whole point. Is this no price? They're seven gallon, way bigger than the other one that I have at home and I need several. Hopefully they have some more. I like these. They have a really big, nice shape to them. Nice, large plants. Okay, I'm going to poke around some more. If I see anything worthy of showing, then I will show it. If not, then we'll cut back to the house. Realized I was walking around out in the field and hadn't really even gone through and shown the glory of the more ornamental, fancy plants. So there's that. Look at and come on, I only come here like once a year, but it's always worth making sure to show the selection. Because everything is just stunning here. I love the way everything is laid out. And some nice hollies. Ooh. And magnolias. Oh my gosh, look at all of these. The 200 gallon Japanese maple. That's a beautiful plant. Don't even want to know how much that actually I do. How much are you? Just out of curiosity. No price? Yeah, didn't think so. Okay, so they have these magnolias here. They're the K Paris magnolias. You know, I went like pretty crazy over the little gem last week when I was talking about it. The K Paris is similar, but it's supposed to be much faster growing. I'm wondering if I should go with one of these for my front yard instead of a little gem. I don't know though. I think the little gem has a much, much nicer form to it. The Paris, whenever I've seen them, they have more of a kind of a wild look to them, but they're pretty easy to prune up and they're more hardy. They're fully hardy to zone six, whereas the little gem is a zone seven, but like I said, they usually do fine here. Huge price difference too. These are double the cost. They're very large, but it's also a fast grower. I don't need to get this on a larger size. I could get that smaller, and I would be totally fine with that. This isn't really the kind of place to shop and try and find the trees in a smaller size, because you could, you can tell. They, they got the big ones here. I only bring it up because now I'm rethinking everything. I was saying I was going to get a little gem, some Prague Viburnums, and two Taylor Junipers, but I'm kind of... I guess I'm not rethinking everything. I'm only rethinking the Magnolia. So I guess that can wait. Both the nurseries have plenty of both right now, so I don't have to do that immediately. But I do need to get on this viburnum and juniper situation because the time is now how to get everything planted. But you know what I mean. It's not like an emergency. It was just in the mood to get stuff done. Ooh, great myrtle. Looking nice. Lots of bees. Okay, last stop, and then I'm going home and we can look at plants. Look at these. Beautiful. It says hearty pink on there. That's that's good to know. I have the purples at home that look a lot like this. That price though, sixteen ninety. Oh, I didn't, there's been absolutely no update as to what's happening. I stopped by Home Depot because it's right by the nursery I was just at and there are lots of arborvitaes, which I was thinking about getting, but they look like junk. I'll show them to you in a minute. Wanted to show these real quick because people always like them. At least the purple ones when I show them in the videos. I might grab one even though I think the price is very steep. I like that the local nurseries have been cheaper than the big box stores, at least where I live lately. So you may notice I haven't like been doing a ton of like going to Lowe's and Home Depot things because it's it's been more expensive and I like supporting the local places and these are $17? But why? It's pretty. 
that doesn't justify seven. It doesn't matter. I'm probably going to get it just only because it says hardy. So I know for sure that I can stick it in the ground and it'll come back next year. And the other ones, I'm like, maybe they will, maybe they won't. I don't know. The arbs, I don't, we don't even need to go over there. I don't want to give them any more time. They look like junk. They look bad. Won't be getting any of those. Sorry about the wonky camera action there. Lots of mums here. Other reason I just had to pick up the camera and update was because, like I said, when I've shown these in videos before, people get excited and they want to know where they can get them, but they never have a name. I'm at Home Depot. This is a big box store, so maybe where you live they'll have them there too. I don't know. It's a really pretty one though. I wonder if they have any that aren't fully opened yet because I would like some more bloom time and not get one that's already flushed out all the way. That one's still got lots of buds on it. That'd be a good one. Okay, now I'm having trouble trusting these tags. That says Hardy Red. And like with that that I don't uh maybe not. It's very pretty, but I don't think that that is that. Uh oh, what am I, what's happening now? What, no, 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 I'm putting this back. It looks way too much like the purples. I'm not spending $17 on something that I basically already have. And now the tag has me thinking that I don't even know if it's gonna be perennial, so if I'm gonna be rolling the dice, may as well do it with the ones that I have. This is a cute little cedar. There's, there's the end of that story. Isn't that exciting? Like I said, the arbs, I mean, nah. Not for 60 bucks, I don't think so. We'll go local and get something that looks a lot nicer. Look at this one. I mean, look at Come on, that's terrible. I was excited to see they have Firelight Tidbit Hydrangeas. That's a fun one, but also, I mean, they Home Depot'd them. House plants for the house plant lovers. Majesty palms, Dracenas, and some very expensive $110 ficus lauratas. And they look nice though. Still very pricey. Oh, that's not gonna work. You're gonna die. Gotta get you out of there. What happened to you? Setting people up for disaster, putting them in cash pots that don't have holes in them. Why would we do that? What's the point other than getting people to kill their plants so they have to come back and buy more? <sighs> Feels so nice outside. It's been a couple of days, got the plants home, had to do a bunch of stuff with the pool, and then weekend activities, been playing with the dogs and whatnot. No, I have not planted up the things from the last video yet. You have to remember, it's only been a couple days for me. It's been a week for y'all. Only been a couple days. I've been busy doing the weekend thing and trying to oh, trying to deal with my computer situation. We'll talk about that some more at the end. And on that note, totally forgot that I'm in this mode right now with awkward editing where I can't make a lot of cuts unless I want to spend six hours editing a 10 minute clip. So things are going to be a little bit slow and odd. There's some great lighting. I'm gonna start dragging some plants over and have a look at what I picked up. But hopefully with better lighting, I need to find a different angle. That's not going to work, is it? Maybe something like there's already plants here. I don't know. How are we gonna do this? It's this will do. Things are a little bit messy over here, but that's all right. We'll make it work. For starters, look at these gems. Aren't they beautiful? These are the Pragans Vibertums, Prag Vibertums, the uh, Viburnum Praganese. Where is a tag so that I don't have to try and get my graphics card to behave while I try and type it out on the screen? No? No tag? All right. Oh, no, no. Have the tag from the one that I picked up last week from Greenscape. So there's the name, the Prag Viburnum, the Viburnum Praganese Evergreen Multistemmed. They flower eight to 10 feet tall and wide. I swear I've seen them bigger than that. Hardy to negative 20 degrees. That's a zone five. Full sun, we talked about that in the last video. Yeah, okay, full sun, sure. I see these planted in fairly deep shade all over St. Louis. In fact, where I'm going to be putting these, I need to, you need some more information here. So I grabbed four of these in seven gallon containers and they're probably four to four and a half feet high really great size on them. So there's those two 
right there. And then I had the other two just kind of shoved away over here in this corner. There's, there's not that much to see with them because they look an awful lot like these two right here. So uh, I talked about this in last week's video. These are going to go up along my fence. A couple of them are just on the opposite side of where my neighbors have some of these planted that are in pretty deep shade. So if theirs are doing well, it seems reasonable to assume that hopefully, well, these would too, right? They should, should be fine. That being said, they do prefer more of a part sun to full sun situation. They're just pretty sturdy, tolerant plants. Growth habit's going to be a little bit different with the less light, not going to grow as quickly, and there's gonna be more spacing between the leaves. They could get more leggy, need more pruning. The ones that are up there though, look pretty good that my neighbors have. So I figured this is probably gonna work out just fine. The flowering on the Pragans viburnum, it's nowhere near as intense and abundant as you see on a lot of the other leatherleaf viburnums. I've never noticed a Pragans viburnum just covered in white flowers in the springtime. They hold their flower heads in a little bit tighter. They're smaller but it's still like nice to look at but it's not as big of, of a floral show but i like the pragans mostly because i just i really like the foliage on the pragans it's not lit very well the sun is just awkward right now it's a certain time of year the angle of the sun filming can get tricky outside they have a deep green glossy leaf that has a, like a bronzes bronzes a bronzish hint to it. The veining is, has that bronze coloring on it. They have a bronzy fuzziness on the inside that does, it can be a skin irritant that makes me itch and burn, so be careful with that. Just nice looking shrubs. They grow fairly quickly too. Pretty sturdy plants. You know, set them, get them in the ground with a nice starter fertilizer, keep them well watered, obviously, especially their first few years while they're getting established. But after that, they just do their thing. Pretty low maintenance. I've never had any issues with viburnums where I live here in St. Louis having to deal with any soil pH problems. So they do like things more to the neutral to acidic side. I'm pretty sure they are tolerant of slightly alkaline soils. Not horribly alkaline, but just a little bit. They should be okay. So those are the Pragans. Grabbed four of those. I two of them are going up on the hill. Another one is going to go, you're not really going to be able to see it, but in the corner where my fences meet right there, you can see through the neighbor's yard. That's, that's where another one of them is going to go, possibly two. So I might have an extra. Actually, I don't have an extra because I would like to use the Pragans viburnums to at some point, once the plants are moved inside this fall, to start filling in gaps all the way down here along the fence line. So there's just no privacy through the fence here. It's hard to tell because I fill everything up with plants that mostly go inside during the winter time. But you can, you can see right here. You can see right through there, and I think that having some of those pregans on every one of these six, no, eight foot sections that are in there, I think is what those are. So that'd be one, two, three, four, five, like five more to put over there. I have an extra, I have two extra, so I need three more. And then that would fill in this area down here, eight to 10 feet of that nice dark glossy green foliage, has those flowers that the pollinators will enjoy, and get to return to whenever it's spring and some slight fragrance. I don't know if I've noticed fragrance from the Pragans before. Comment down below. Thinking about it and it's not ringing a bell with me, but maybe I've just forgotten. Like I said, let me know. Oh, and they have these neat little seed heads on them that they leave behind from the flowers. That's that, and it's not much to look at. I just think it's a nice looking shrub. Dark glossy green, browns on the inside. They remind me of, I can't remember the name of it, so just never mind. Forget I even just started that sentence. Next up, <laughs> have the Taylor junipers here. And then, oh, good boy, Turbo. So there's a better picture of how large those are. You just got to see the dog walk through there. These are from Chesterfield Valley Nursery, where I started the video. And then I went to Greenscape, which I was at in last week's video. And look at, aren't they just, oh, they're so nice. Taylor junipers. Been wanting some of these for a few years now. They have been gaining popularity for a while but I've been wanting to watch how they do in our area because junipers can really be hit or miss with hot, humid weather that fluctuates all over the place. The tailors, they're looking to be pretty sturdy. I mean, that's already what they're known for, but it was one of those things where I was like, I need to see it to believe it, and I'm believing it. And they've been growing around here for a while, but they hadn't caught my eye until not too terribly long ago. The reason I love the tailor junipers is that narrow 
columnar growth on them. Look at that. Isn't it beautiful? Sorry for the subpar quality here. Normally I'd have like things popping up on the screen, but that's just not gonna work till I get the new computer. This is Juniperus virginiana, the Taylor form, Taylor Juniper, 36 to 48 inches wide and up to 30 feet high. I think these average of close to two feet of growth a year. Does it say on here? 13 to 24 inches per year. Full sun, juniper, you know, it's gonna be pretty junipery things. Drought tolerant once it is established. Hardy to minus 40. So what is that, zone three, I think? I'm pretty sure that's the zone three. That's a sturdy plant. I have an area in my front yard, Turbo's having fun over there, where uh, there are some columns that lead up to the front of the house. And I've wanted to put a couple of these on each side of the pathway for a while. So that's why I was on the lookout for some of these. And you can see with, you know, one to two feet of growth per year, didn't really need to get the $660 ones. That's a fairly fast growing evergreen. If they put on two feet of growth per year, then they will have nearly doubled in size in just a few years. So it just didn't seem necessary. These were a fantastic price. They're probably, I'd say five foot. That would be my guess. So they're still little skinny things, which is good. That's what I wanted. And it'll just make them easier to plant. That's a smaller hole that needs to be dug. These are a great alternative to the Italian Cypress. I love an Italian Cypress, but well, for starters, there is zone seven and up zone 6a 6b i see some plants around here that look like they might be an italian cypress but i don't know i can't say whether or not they are i would never recommend somebody in the st louis area to even bother trying to grow the italian cypresses because the fluctuations we have it can like today i think it's supposed to be like 90 degrees yesterday it was 60 it was 47 just a couple nights ago like the temperatures are just all over the place and you have the hot dry and then hot and humid and then cold and dry and then cold and humid those italian cypresses just tend to blech with that the taylor junipers they put up with it just fine people are growing them all over the country all different types of climates and they're doing well and these tend to stay more full than the italian cypress do i would say the main differences between them would be that well there's going to be more of a that bluish silvery green color to the foliage on the Taylor Juniper, whereas you're gonna get more of a green on the Italian Cypress. And these are more full. These tend to have a lot more branching on the inside, just keeps them looking nice and fluffy. And then the uh, height, <laughs> that's what it was, the height. The Italian Cypresses get way, 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 way taller than these do. These will max out at around 30 feet high, whereas those Italian Cypresses, I'm, I think those can get like a hundred feet. I don't know if that's very common, but I would say 40 to 60 feet is not unusual for an Italian Cypress in the US, that is. So these are going to be a little bit smaller, but more full and much, much, much more sturdy. They don't grow quite as fast as the Italian Cypress either, or maybe they grow about the same as the Italian Cypress, I should say. I don't really know. Y'all let me know. I have heard people say that those Italian Cypresses will put on like three to four feet of growth per year. I believe that they could possibly do that, but I totally believe that it's possible for one of these to put on three feet of growth per year. I don't think that that means that that's something you would expect from them though. One to two feet from these is pretty normal and the Italian cypresses are known for being fast growers. So maybe two to three feet, not a huge difference there. And I, I don't know, that doesn't really matter to me. Overall, just super excited about these nice looking plants, good size on them for what I wanted, nothing huge get to watch them grow over the years. These are in uh, either seven or 10 gallon containers. I'm not sure. And the sun's is that that's been, oh my gosh, the lighting was wrong for this the entire time. I'm so sorry. Well, there's a better look at them. You can get a better idea of the color of the foliage. I don't grow a ton of junipers for various reasons. Junipers in my yard can be hit or miss. Like I started to talk about the blue point or the a blue arrow, sky blue, whatever. One of those other juniper varieties when I was at the nursery, the issues I usually have is that we'll have just like really awkward temperature spells and they'll brown out and die. And I see that fairly often with the blue arrow and skyrocket. That's, that's another one that like you'll have them for a few years and then just weather goes nuts and it's kind of bleh. I haven't seen that with the tailors before. So I think that this is a good direction to go. I love the little points they have at the top. 
because you know it's all calmer and spiky my skin is on fire right now though that is one thing that i think i talked about in the last video or the last vlog where i got some plants and i picked up one of these viburnums i don't think i mentioned it in this one the viburnums it's really common for them to be a skin irritant so sleeves and gloves usually a good idea if you're gonna be working with them very much if i just like walk past it it doesn't bother me i have to like really get up there and touch the plant for it to irritate my skin the junipers i am very sensitive to like they set my skin on fire i get all red and bumpy but again just long sleeves and gloves not putting them in an area with high traffic and i don't know if that's common the juniper allergy because i don't I don't know, it's not something I'm really all that concerned about. And it really, that shouldn't matter anyway, as long as I don't like take my clothes off and rub my body all over these things, which isn't likely to happen, but you know, just never say never. Okay, and then back to the magnolia conversation that started to happen at the nursery, and then I just sort of abandoned the topic. This is not the, not the, you gonna play air hockey right now? Turbo has always really enjoyed scooting seashells and things around the patio, so I took a little yellow bowl that seemed fairly unbreakable and gave it to him laid upside down. And it keeps him occupied for a long time, but it gets loud and noisy. Right, the K Paris, which is what they had at the nursery that I was debating getting, because it's torn between the little gem and the K Paris. Here's the little gem here. Talked about these last week. Absolutely love them. The K Paris is a nice variety too, though. It's going to be about the same size as the little gem in St. Louis anyways, around 20 feet or so. Further south you go, the little gems will get larger than that. It's just it's pretty rare to see them any bigger than that here because they're not really fully hardy here. They're a zone seven. The K Paris is a zone six. So a better option for my area as far as just when we have those one-off horrible winters that would likely kill the little gems back, not kill the entire plant, but definitely set them back a few years. K Paris don't have to worry about that. The K Paris also grows much more quickly. I think they can put on a couple feet of growth per year, which you're not likely to see with the little gem, at least not this far north. The little gem though, has a better shape. I like the way the leaves look better. They're more dainty and they have the more of a brown undertone to them. The K Paris also has it, but it's just not as intense and the overall form of the little gem is more formal. And uh, I'm talking about landscaping my front yard right now, which I never pointed out. <laughs> Other than the viburnums, the junipers and the magnolia that we're talking about are from my front yard, which is much more formal. My property is kind of like a mullet. The front yard's all business, all formal in the backyard's just, you know, anything goes back here. And then the K Paris was in a either 20 or 25 gallon container. They were much larger. They were over $400, which really considering the size of the plant, not a terrible price. Trees are expensive. So that's just the way it goes. You're investing in something you're going to have for a very long time, but they're a fast grower. Seems like a steep price for something I could, I could go ahead and get one that's much smaller and just wait for the plant to grow and put on some size, save some money. So you're paying for time when you pay a lot of money for a tree. So I understand that. But I also don't think that the spot where it would be going in my front yard that I could even dig a hole for a 25 gallon pot because there are a lot of old roots and some old pipes and things that need to be lifted out of the area. So long story, not short at all, kept it pretty long. I decided to get another one of the little gems. And look at it, isn't it just beautiful? It's backlit again. We'll go to the other side. Have to turn it around though because I was showing it from its good side. See, that's the back side. We'll go ahead and give this a twist. Turn it around so you can see <laughs> it's actually looking from the front where it's not quite as wonky. It has some growth that needs to even out on it. It's perfect. I love the little gems. This one is a smidge smaller than the one I picked up last week, but it is much more full. I like the shape on this one better. It's a little bit wonked, but that's not a big deal. You just plant it at the opposite of the angle that it's at right now, and that will straighten out. The other big reason I like the little gem, not just because they have more of a formal appearance, is that these flower a lot more. I don't know about the K Paris for sure. The little gems, they do their spring flowering, and then they will randomly throw out flowers throughout the rest of the summer and into the fall. 
This one has buds on it right now. It had a flower when I brought it home. And then the one I picked up last week had a flower that was open that's fallen off and it's already opened up another one way up high where you can't see it. And it has, I think, five or six other buds on it. And it's September right now. That's fantastic. I love the smell of magnolias and the, the idea of being able to have them out here and have them flowering throughout the summer. I just, I absolutely love that. They're so fragrant. They're pretty when you can actually see them. They're all the way up there. Can't really tell. I mean, we can't grow gardenias and jasmine here. In zone six, there are some types that they claim can be grown, but it's uh, you're rolling the dice with them. But the magnolia, you get that rich citrusy magnolia scent that's very similar. It has the essence, I should say, of gardenia and jasmine, magnolia, like they all kind of fall under the same scent umbrella, but I think magnolia is kind of like a gardenia or jasmine with a hint of lemon. That's what that fragrance reminds me of. So that was the other reason I wanted a little gem. Just good shape. They flower a whole bunch and I just, I, I just like them. I think they're adorable. It's an overall cute plant. So there it is. There's everything. The little gem magnolia, the two Taylor junipers, four of those viburnums, lots and lots and lots of shrubs and plants building up. Oh, I picked up the things from Home Depot. Didn't talk about those yet. Those are down here. Come with me. I will bring them up to the camera so we can have a better look at them. The uh, boxwood, y'all saw that. It's a, just, it's a really nice looking boxwood. Nice thick trunk, be able to do a fun planter with that one. And then these right here, you tangled up in the sweet potato vine already. Aren't they nice? You see them? You know what those are? Maybe, you can probably see the tag. Mondula pothos, my favorite pothos. I have not seen these for sale in a few years, not since I bought the one that I have now. And since they're my favorite, I figured I should go ahead and grab a few of them. The price is good, and uh, it's the only pothos that I would want multiples of all around my house. They have, in my opinion, this, some of the most beautiful foliage. Try and get a decent look at that. Isn't it just beautiful? There's a slight cuppage to the leaf on them. The variegation is, well, it's variegation. You never know what you're gonna get on each leaf, but there are more hints of that like minty green mixed in with the whiter splotches. You just have a nice heavy contrast with them. Some of them, you get more of the white on them. Like you see with the Pearls and Joy pothos. So it's kind of like a mix between that, like the Pearls and Joy and the, uh, uh, what is it, Marble Queen. You get a little bit of everything with this one. They are beautiful pothos. I am so happy. I was able to grab a few of these. They had a whole bunch of them. I didn't buy all of them. Beautiful pothos. I'm really glad I was able to grab some of those so I can have them spread around the house. Just fun, nice looking plants. Okay, camera's going to overheat. That means it's time to wrap it up. Not next week, the week after, going to start getting some plants in the ground. Depending on the weather, I still have <laughs> some more shrubs to pick up, believe it or not. The computer situation, if you last watched, watched last week's vlog, I, uh, haven't gotten a new one yet, but I've narrowed it down, finding the right thing that has everything I want in it for <laughs> under like $10,000. It's been a challenge, but uh, there are plenty out there. It's just finding them for sale. So until I get the new computer, there may not be Wednesday videos. So there might be a couple weeks. It's just gonna be Saturday vlogs, but it's just, it's, it takes so long to edit with the, the graphics cards not working with Adobe right now. So I don't know I can, if I can pull off more than one video a week as it is until I get that handled. And I don't like releasing videos that I can't spend much time on editing or that I'm spending a ton of time on editing but can't actually do much with the editing, which is what's going on right now. But hopefully soon in a couple weeks. I also think I'm gonna switch editing softwares. I've been playing around with DaVinci. If anybody out there is using Adobe Premiere Pro, I highly, highly recommend giving DaVinci a go it's night and day. Adobe Premiere Pro, super glitchy. You never know what you're gonna deal with with that program. It seems like once a week there's an issue with it you have to troubleshoot and fix things with. DaVinci, it's just kinda doing everything. You don't have to pay monthly for it. It's a one-time purchase and I, I don't know. There's a big learning curve. DaVinci is more advanced. It's like what's used to make studio films. I think all the Marvel videos are edited on DaVinci. There's so much more you can do with it though and it's actually seeming more smooth and user-friendly so far. I uh, haven't gotten much done with it yet because the computer like doesn't really line up to use DaVinci, but I think I'll be switching over to that too. So things are gonna be awkward for a few weeks while I learn 
a new software and get a new computer up and going. So thanks for uh, being able to, or just. Really, so close to being done. And the camera's gonna overheat. It's not even that hot out yet. It's still early morning. Remember just a moment ago when I was talking about rolling the dice with gardenias and jasmines here in zone six and have been raving about the Little Gem Magnolia, which is a zone seven. I only base it off of what I see in the area. Plenty of people are growing them. It's not that often that people actually lose them to bad winter conditions unless they have them situated in a spot that maybe isn't draining very well or it's just being blasted by cold winter air. The spots where I'm going to have these are fairly sh sheltered locations, I would think. I did just realize though, I said I'm not planting anything next week. I do, the mums, those have to be planted. So I'll try and film that. We will see the way the stuff works with the computer. If it's still, if the camera's not moving around a lot, the editing portion of things, not so bad. It's when there's motion, because the issues with the graphics card and the GPU, the GPU is the graphics processor, graphics processing unit, and that actually has to do more with video than pictures. You should probably call it like picture video processing unit. It has to do with the movement. So if things are still, not a big deal, but when I'm walking around and all this is going on, no, can't handle it. So if there's a lot of, I'll see if I can find a way to set up something stationary and film whatever I do with these. I think it would be fun to watch that process. Personally, I would like to know what's happening with all of these if I've been watching someone's channel and seeing all these pretty flowers. So hopefully we'll get that done next week. Probably going to be some more plant shopping because I still need some more shrubs and it's just that time of year and it's fun to do, fun to get done. I just remember staring under the umbrella. I can already feel the camera getting hot again. Oh, there is one other thing. I don't know if we can... I'm gonna try and squeeze this in. The camera is getting hot, and the longer this video is, the harder it's going to be to get edited because the camera just can't handle it, and I just kicked my tripod. I will probably still be getting a K Paris Magnolia to go right here, right where this Rose of Sharon standard is. It's a good spot for it. It's about 15 feet away from the house. I know it doesn't look very sunny, but there's a Rose of Sharon in both spots. They're flowering. Those are flowering. The magnolia should be just fine. I wanted something to put over there for a few years now that would be big and evergreen and grow quickly for a part shade spot. And it's not the easiest thing to find a plant for. Thought about the holly, but eh, I don't want to use a holly over there. They're kind of spiky. And uh, those Nelly Stevens hollies, when they're out in the open where the wind can hit them really hard, they tend to get like burnout spots in them. So I don't. Now, I think that the K Paris would be good there. It grows fast. I can get one at a smaller size for a relatively good price. And over the years, that will fill in that spot very nicely. Add a lot of privacy and it'll be pretty. It'll be nice to look at. And when this maple goes, because that won't be too terribly long, it's way too close to the house, there will be a tree over there that's more appropriately sized to have over there. That, that, that'll be good. And even though the K Paris can still get 20 feet tall, perhaps even bigger than that further south, it's still a size of a tree that's going to be more manageable for pruning, whereas this is just, it's very expensive to prune a tree this big and it's starting to rub on the house. So unfortunately in the next couple of years, that thing's probably going to have to go. Whoever planted it there should have bumped it back probably a good eight to 10 feet and those roots in the foundation, no. Not gonna work there. So planning for down the road, getting a magnolia, a dwarf magnolia and over there, I think that'd be good. Not a little gem though. One, because the little gem grows a lot more slowly and that spot is exposed. A lot of winter air blows around there. I'm not gonna push it with a zone seven plant in a spot where the air is blowing around really strongly during the winter time. So it'll dry it out and kill it. That was, that was the point. That was the segue. <laughs> it took me a long time to get to that marginally hardy, plant them in a spot that's mostly sheltered. Although I do usually often, I should say, often see them in spots that aren't sheltered. They do okay, the little gems just be safe near a wall or some place where harsh winter air isn't going to be blowing on them really hard. Harsh winter air, try the K Paris. That's a pretty sturdy magnolia. Okay, all done here. My brain stopped working, the having to constantly talk and not being able to cut things out and trying to not mess things up. Where's the brain out? I don't know how commentators and broadcasters do it. It's just like mind numbing, like it kills my brain having to stay on point for such a long time. Everybody's doing well, thanks for hanging out. Hope you're having a great day and a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Comment down below, say hi. What's going on in your gardens? Your experiences with the Pragans Viburnums, you love them, you hate them. I know there, there are some that are much, much, much more ornamental 
to plant, but I just, I love the foliage on those pragans. I think they're beautiful. Why am I not looking at the pragan while I'm talking about the pragan? Come on, so I'm talking about the brain turned off, not with it anymore. It's a leaf thing. I like the way they look. All right, and of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.